What's up guys, this is Scott Gaver, writer and producer of Sixes and Sevens. And I'm Antonio Jordan, I'm director and video editor of Sixes and Sevens. This is our official Q&A for the film project. <laughs> Just wanted to submit a whole bunch of questions from you guys, basically to promote the out of this movie. We basically did the movie back in March, getting ready to release it in spring of 2018, and uh, we wanted to do this video basically to promote and have fun with you guys so you guys can learn a little bit more about the film and us. So we appreciate everybody who submitted questions. If we did not pick yours, um, do not worry. I will send you a private message to get your question answered. You will not be ignored. <laughs> Question number one is actually from a friend of mine, Giorgio Cavecci. He is actually from uh, Georgia, like halfway around the world. So thank you for submitting, really appreciate it. His question is really for both of us. What is it like to be an independent filmmaker in the US? Uh, well, I've been an independent filmmaker for around three years now. And first thing about being an independent filmmaker, you don't know what you're doing. You improvise, but that's not a bad thing because as you go on and you learn more from things that come to you when you're when you're on the when you're on the progress of creating the, the short film, you learn new things and you 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 have these experiences that then you go into the next project and you and you added them later. Like for sixes and sevens, I was uh, I was the man with the camera. I was the man that was directing them. I was the man that had the cinematography. I I, I had to do a lot of things that I wasn't expecting to do, but I I did them because I I liked the risk. I liked what I was trying to do, and even though it felt like it was a lot in in my hands like right now with the with the editing i enjoyed it and it has been like this for the past three years and i i don't regret it i think a lot of the, one of the biggest things is it's an opportunity for uh new ideas um you know with hollywood there's all these remakes nowadays and yeah. i think it's really a big chance and opportunity for a lot of the you know underground filmmakers and the rising up of today is um, for new ideas to come and uh the fact that the internet is so much easier to put your work out there um now whether it's yeah. on youtube or film festivals or any of the online stuff so um giorgio thank you for your question thank you next question alex warfield alex thank you for submitting your question we appreciate it Alex asked me, what is it that helps you get into character? Um, you know, honestly, for me personally, it's all about the environment. Um, I wrote the project, so it was definitely a larger focus for me, not only focusing on my character, but that is why I went after Antonio Jordan to direct the film. Honestly, he's a big help with that because it's, it's the environment he puts us in. It's, it's the environment he controls around us and you know how he sets the scenes and you know he's very technical with the camera so he he wants to get the best shot along with making sure you know you're still focused on your job and performing the scene you need to do so honestly for me it's it's a, just about the environment you're in staying focused not worrying about the little things because when there's a problem on set it's the director's job the producer's job to take care of it at that time i'm an actor i'm there to do one thing so Thank you for your question. Another question is from a Kathy Jones. She said, how did you go about casting your film? Honestly, I think I controlled most of the casting with this one. Um, I'm the type of guy who I really like to build a team around me, um, like a film family, really, you know. I, I believe the, the better connection you have on a production, the better performance, the better the film is gonna turn out in the end. But when I was writing this, I already had two people in mind who I knew was gonna play characters. Um, in Virginia Hodges and George Lagili, he, um, th when I wrote it, I wrote the parts for them. They're the only people I ever saw as playing these roles. Um, they both just brought such a, such life to the characters that I, as soon as I knew who I was going to have, I knew it was going to work and it worked out perfectly. But, uh, the cool thing is, is not only was I able to keep people from my last, um, project as part of my team, along with George, Nate Wilson, Virginia Hodges, Antonio Jordan, um, on behind the camera, but I was able to expand my network and bring new people in as in uh, Mac Jameson I met for the first time this previous year and we were able to bring him in, Sarah Diona, um, Chazelle Vanesta, and Victoria Graham who I met on the House of Cards set earlier this year. So even with bringing all these new people into uh, my circle, it was really cool because they all just, they all brought a connection, they all brought dedication. 
which is really all I ask for these movies, is dedication and that you just put your heart into it like it's your own. And uh, that, that's really how I went about casting is, you know, I kept the close ones near and, you know, I, I was able to expand and get people from basically all over the East Coast. So that, that was it. So thank you for your question. Next question is from Olivia Mayo. She said, Antonio, as a director, how did you approach this project and why did you agree to sign on for it? All right, so I, I'm going to start with why I agreed on it, uh, mostly because uh, Scott and I, we, we worked before together and I, I have directed him before. He started uh, as one of the main characters in a short film that I did called Aftermath. It was one of my school projects and it was one of the, one of the best projects that I'm proud of doing. And uh, the way that I approached this movie was, uh, when I read the story, I, I had this sense of like a horror, well, not, not like a scary horror, but sort of like a tense psychological, psych psychological kind of yeah. situation that I've never, never approached before. And it's something that intrigued me a lot. And the way that I did it was mostly just base myself from movies that I've seen before. and. I believe that uh, there's this mix of of uh, the the horror psychological thriller and and this tale of a of a lost love story that just hides between between the the story and you can totally tell that through the through the progress of the film. There's this thing that is hiding on the character that Scott plays and and we see it more and more as the film progresses and so I wanted to blend that. That's how the characters represented. It's this, it's this horror fa facade that just like it's hiding this romantic past. And somehow I wanted to tell that story. The relationship between Tara, Tara, uh, Clara and Teddy, you can see that there's this human touch of it out of all of this horrific experience that's happening on the story. And, and it's gonna be really interesting. And I hope that it like it it makes you connect with the character yeah and i honestly to add to that and i think i can speak for both of us me i think me and antonio have a very similar um way of as far as filmmaking and storytelling is i think we both really like to tell the darker side of human nature yeah um you know we we like to tell you what's real i mean the world the world fill fills you know our heads with such bullshit that they don't we, we don't speak of the truth um, you know, what really is going inside people's heads, um, what, what's going on behind closed doors that they're hiding from you, you know, and uh, that, that's thing, one thing I think we really like to touch on because unfortunately we live in a very cruel and evil world and uh, it, it's kind of like a warning message, you know, it's, it's what we want to tell, we want to get out there that, you know, these, these things are happening to people. So I, I think the fact that we both like to tell the, the darker side of human nature to get that raw imagery and that raw character development going on is one thing that we really have in common and collaborate well on. Because if you watch, if you watch some of the stuff that we've done, it's, it's more, it's definitely even with the cinematography, it's so dark. It's, it's like a Terrence Malick film almost, <laughs> you know. So yeah. Thank you for your question. We appreciate Thank you. it. Uh, next question is one from one of my greatest friends, uh, Tony Privet, out in California. Um, Tony said to me. What are the inspirations for the stories that you write? Tony, thank you, brother, for the uh, question. I'll see you soon, bro. Um, honestly, for me personally, um, with anything that I write, with the last stuff, um, I really like to reflect off what's going on in my life um, emotionally or uh, just a situation going on. And I use a lot of symbolism in my writing to reflect uh, my own personal life going on. and. For this story particular, um, it was it was months ago when I wrote it, and uh, I was kind of at the point in my life where I, I had a very huge dramatic transition in life, and uh, I was I was feeling a a ton of emotions at that time. It was it was a roller coaster ride of emotions. It was I was feeling anger, hate. Um, you know, I, I was I was going crazy in my life at the time, and there were so many things going on, and. You know, I, at that time I wasn't doing a lot of writing and I thought to myself, you know, to get back into where I need to be as far as my career goes, how can I trigger these emotions that I have going on in my, in my head and all this stuff going on. So that's, that's when I decided to write a character 
about um, what I had, so a character that I could kind of release all this tension that I had, and I, I figure I could make a develop and make a positive out of a negative that way. And then once the character got written, then a story came along, and that's how it kind of gradually affected from there. So I, I take everything from my own personal life, um, and I've learned recently through this past year. Um, you know, the more authentic I tell my stories of, of what's going on in the real life to what I write in my scripts um, is definitely making better stories. And I feel like the more life experience I get, the better my writing gets because I have more things that I can tell. Tony, thank you for your question, bro. And I will see you soon. Uh, the next question is from a Tabby Morella. Right. Tabby, thank you for your question. She asked what the film is about. So without giving too much information away, I'm not going to tell you the whole storyline, but the plot is a man named Teddy Steitman is psychologically insane and is about the relationship between him and his psychiatrist. And his psychiatrist goes on a little bit of a hunt to find the deeper meaning of why he is the way he is. So uh, we'll have to watch the film. Yeah, so thank you for your question. All right, our final question is by another really good personal friend of mine, Angelica Hernandez. I saved this one for last because I, I think this is a really interesting question. It's probably one of my favorites. What did you learn about yourself through this filmmaking process? I think that's an interesting question because um, my personal answer, yours could be completely different, but my answer is, like I said before, I was at a time in my life um, where I had a little bit of a setback and I didn't know what I was gonna do, how I was gonna move forward. And instead of you know giving up on any dreams I had or taking a break until I figured it out, I decided to take my energy and transfer it into a character, into a script, into a story, and now into a movie. Um, so what I, I learned about myself is no matter what the situation, no matter how hard life has you down, no matter what the crossroad is, you don't give up on your dream. You don't stop, you don't take a break. I feel like when you're at rock bottom, or when you feel like you were at rock bottom in life and you feel like there's nowhere to go, that's when you fight the hardest for your dream because that's gonna pull the most out of you. Um, so I definitely learned um, no matter what, you, you don't give up no matter where you are. And uh, when, you're at, when you feel like you're at your low, lowest, that's when you fight your hardest, so. Yeah, no, and I basically, from what I learned from the movie itself, from the stories, most of, most of acts of acceptance that we were talking before, it's that um, how it doesn't matter how 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 hard life hits you and like how many obstacles come in the way, accepting the fact that you 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 need the help and you and then that you need to you need to confront this this situation will help you move forward and with a lot of patience and with a lot of help from other people, things can go right and things can go well and things can end up looking fantastic like this movie is looking. Looks really good. Guys, thank you for your questions. We really appreciate it. Like I said, we will get to the ones who we did not get a chance to answer on camera. I will message you personally and get your questions answered for you. We appreciate the love and support. The movie is coming very soon. The next two or so months I would believe yeah, in film festivals season. and uh, much more projects in store for you. Thank you guys. Much love. We'll see you soon. Bye.